Hello, it's Super B Shirley with BBSBs, and today is Tuesday, November 30th, 2021. I thought I'd do a quick walkthrough of the workstation I created to cut the comb off the frames for sale. So I just have a plastic colander on top of a plastic measuring vessel. I've got an old ice cream pail to gather the wax cappings. I will do another video hopefully showing how I melt those down. It's too late in the season to feed them back to the bees, too cold outside, so I think I'll do the melting. And then the clear jars are what I gathered after I strained the um, wax cappings and then the additional pieces on the lay-ins frame. Since my lay-ins frames are wired, there's two smaller sections on either side, close to the sides of the frames that were not included in the cut comb. Um, so I strain those. I've got some deli containers. I had various containers I had a source uh, throughout my area because I was running out. So check your restaurant supply places or your um, baking supply places for sources for those. Got my scale because I did 14 ounce portions. And then I just have a large serving platter I use to balance my frames on. I'll insert a photo here. I think I took one when I balanced a frame on it. Wasn't the, wasn't the best setup, but it's what I had. It's what I worked with this year and it worked um, okay. Um, and then various spoons and cutting utensils that will be dedicated to the honey business now because now they've got wax on them. Can't clean that wax totally off. I do have these tubs that I bought from Home Depot and I'll be creating some racks because when they're not full, the frames hit. And actually, if the honey has been, if the comb has been, uh, if you look down here, um, if it is not a little indented from the top bar width, they are touching as they uh are stored and you can see down there that they get uncapped because they're touching the next frame over all right so right now i just got them in some trash bags to kind of minimize that and then i'll be putting a piece of wood on the bottom or the wood is on there right now so that the frames aren't sitting on the plastic uh, bottom uh, so the honey can drain a little bit over here you can see that i've got two slats of wood down there so that the honey can drain into the bottom and not the wood won't be sitting in the honey until I get some, a racking system in here. So in this tub, I can fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And then I could fit, nope, I can't fit one over there. So there'll be some wasted space right here where the wheels are. That's totally okay. These tubs worked great because of the wheels. I could bring everything in from the highs to the house without having to lift all of these frames heavy with honey. So these totes will go in my garage for the year, for the winter. Uh, they've all taken a turn into the freezer. And again, it's too late for me to set these out. It's too cold here for them to clean up these frames. Uh, they'll have to clean them up in the, in the spring. Unless we get super a oh, super warm day, then I can set them up by the hives and they can clean them up this winter. I also have this Rubbermaid tote. I've had it for years, but it is tall enough and wide enough that I could fit uh, frames inside. So that was my temporary tote until I got the frames that actually have a gasket on it so I can seal all pests out. So the cover for this tote is not uh, uh, lock tight, but it works in a pinch. That's it. I just wanted to share my cut comb station in case you're wondering how to set up your own. All right, this is Super B Shirley with BBSBs. We'll buzz you later. Bye. This is the honey that was left after the crush and strain method. Lots of goodness in there.